Hey guys, Watson here. It finally happened, we have our release date and a brand new trailer. I'm beyond excited and it wouldn't be a new Splatoon 3 trailer without Watson doing a ridiculously long in-depth analysis, but this time there's just too much to discover. I might have overdid it this time around and I'm a few days late but I had to take the time to ensure a top quality. Why take it from me? I have played Splatoon since the very first game's release competitively and became European and Vice World Champion along the way, so I know a thing or two about the series. I split the video in four parts, specials first, then the main weapons, after that sub weapons, until I get to all the other additional new info from the trailer, like player cards, DUI, maps, gear, abilities, you get it. I included timestamps as well for you guys to maneuver around. With Splatoon 3 releasing, I will create a lot of educational content for the game, as well as epic montages and funny meme videos, so consider subscribing. But for now, let's not waste any more time and dive right into it. And let's start off with specials. There are two completely new ones shown in the trailer, one of them being some kind of vacuum cleaner, and it looks like it's straight out of Luigi's Mansion or something. The Twitter account confirmed its name to be Inkvec. It has a pretty low start time and lasts for about 5 seconds both times it's used in the trailer. It can eat and absorb projectiles, no matter how big they are, slusher shots, shooter shots and even bombs too. It also has some kind of bag or canister at its back and it fills up the more you absorb. After you're done absorbing, you can turn your defense into offense and fire one big final shot, which is followed up by a huge explosion, kind of like the Raymaker shots in Splatoon 2. You can only assume that the more you absorb, the more damage or maybe the more range you're gonna get. It's hard to tell, but there's definitely gonna be a trade-off. Both times when they fire, they fire roughly like a second after they stopped absorbing. So we don't know if you can actually hold it for longer than that or if it's a set time. We also don't know if like the absorbing part is cancelable, because both times they just used it for the full 5 seconds. But what if there's no opponents around anymore and you want to cancel it out or just want to shoot your shot earlier? It would be great if it's cancelable, but we can't tell for sure. In the additional Twitter clips we can spot that you can only suck in a certain amount of ink before your canister gets full, which causes you to instantly shoot the shot to probably prevent your special to overheat or something. There's also a red circle shown indicating how big your explosion is gonna be. We also see a clip where the weapon shoots a pretty big shot without having absorbed any ink, which is weird, since even the tweet confirms that the attack becomes more powerful with the more it inhales. But if you ask me, the shot here seems pretty deadly already, without any ink sucked in. It's definitely a great special for pushing with your opponents. It's kind of like an interactive supportive special with a twist that it also turns its defense into offense. And it looks just way more fun than the supportive specials we had in games before, like the armor in Splatoon 2 where you just click the button and then... Yeah, that's it, kind of. So I really like this push for more interactive specials. Next up we have the other completely new special in this trailer, the Ink Strike. I'm just gonna call it Ink Strike 2.0, because if you look at the top right corner, it looks exactly like the missiles from the Ink Strike. Just that there are three of them, but I mean, that's kind of the, the thing of this game. I mean, it's called Splatoon 3 after all, isn't it? When activated, it fires the missiles immediately, and afterwards you can just run around freely. So you're not stuck in an animation like you were with the Tenta missiles or the original Ink Strike. After the missiles are fired, you can shoot three projectiles. And depending where they land, the Ink Strike's gonna hit there. So that begs the question, can you shoot down the Ink Strike's projectile? Because even when the Ink Strike is coming down, you can see the projectile leading the way. It doesn't seem like that they don't paint too well compared to past Ink Strikes or even the Booyah Bomb. But it kills very fast, as you can see. It kind of feels like a hybrid between Booyah Bomb that you had to throw and the original Ink Strikes. But I'm wondering if it's just replacing the missiles that we saw in the very first trailer. I mean, after all, the missiles kind of evolved from the Ink Strike. And we saw missiles already in an early build, and that's kind of what they evolved into. And since they never showcased the missiles in either trailers or the website or on any social media, they might not even be in the game. But anyway, the Ink Strikes can still land after the game is done in Turf War, but just not too long after the game is done, as you can see here. Next we have the Trisuka. It still behaves like before, but now we can actually see how huge its hitbox is. You shoot three balls that circle around and they are sure to hit everything in their path. It doesn't paint below its feet though, so you can get stuck in ink pretty easily. But where your shot hits, it paints amazingly well, so it might be pretty good in zones at capping zones. 
There seems to be a little bit of knockback and it looks like more than before compared to Splatoon 1. Next we got the big bubbler. It seems like it has a 1 second cast time so you can't instantly react to incoming danger. But still all enemy shots get blocked. Enemies that shoot it though make it smaller with each hit. So with enough focus fire you can shoot down the whole thing probably pretty quickly. It has a 5 seconds uptime which is actually not that long and I wonder if it's just me or does the shield take more damage when you hit the beacon above in the middle. We might need to watch out for that though. There's a sound effect though for when it disappears. After taking a closer look at an old trailer it seems like the big bubbler actually shrunk a bit in size which is in my mind a pretty good change. Also if you take a closer look and zoom all the way in you can spot a beacon sitting on the inside so teammates can properly jump to instant safety if they are aware of it which makes the special weapon way more versatile which is great in my mind. We will see if that deconfirms beacons though since it's now part of a special it seems. We also don't know yet as well if enemies can enter the bubble or if it functions as an impenetrable wall for them or if they even bounce off of it. Next up the Zipcaster. It's the first time we see it from a player's point of view. It seems like the length depends on how many times you use it. Also shooting with your main weapon also decreases the length of it as well. When not shooting I estimate you can get up to 3 jumps out of it. The approach seems fairly obvious though, but you can really go places quickly. We don't know yet if there's gonna be any invincibility frames at some point while flying. We close all the time, like in other parts of the trailers, glowing indicates some invincibility frames but here we just can't tell for sure. We only see it taking damage after landing from the ink. So we gotta see if you as an opponent can shoot it down while mid-air. Next we have the crab tank. As shown before it has two shooting modes. A blaster like one shot with good ink coverage and a shooter like 3 to 4 shot kill but with not so good paint. It has medium to high range, but it seems like when using it you get damage normally. So it's pretty risky since you're a very big target. You can see in this clip that you just take normal damage from the splat bow. And also the rolling mode seems pretty slow. But at least your inkling is not exposed so you might not be able to take damage. At least we see while rolling you instantly start to recover your health. So that probably makes up for it being a such a big and easy target while you shoot. We don't know yet if you damage your opponents like with Baller when you bump into them in the rolling mode or if you can even climb up walls like the Baller did in Splatoon 2. It also seems like there's a 1 second cast time before you can start shooting after you activated it. And also it's 8 seconds long. The last shown special in the trailer is the Killer Whale 5.1. We don't see it for sure but it probably has a target selection like Tenta Missiles where you can either target one or multiple people. It has even less than a 1 second cast time and afterwards you're just free to go. You can just run around, shoot your main or your sub weapon, you're good to go. It seems like after you selected a target, the race seems to start attacking in pairs. First two of them, then two more and at last the last two. If a target is killed already, you can see that they search for the next nearby target automatically. By examining the trailer closer, I, I just, I'm just wondering, does the killer will not damage on impact? Because as you can see here, they're getting clearly hit, but they don't take any damage. It seems like it takes some time before they take damage. In this clip, the 52 damages first, and just afterwards the killer whales finish off the kill. And here you also see that there's no damage at all, so it's pretty easily avoidable. I mean obviously it's aimable at multiple people as you can see here, but it seems just so much weaker because it's just so much less pressure compared to when you just aim it at one guy. To wrap up the specials, just some general things. As Lewis has pointed out on Twitter, most weapons get their special just after 190 points. And some of them even after 200 points. Before the average or the base points for specials was 180 so they might have raised that to minimize the impact of specials a little bit. I mean in general, Splatoon's 3 specials feel like that they, that they give a lot of versatile tools to the players in order to confirm those splats and they might be stronger therefore, so they might want to counterbalance that a bit by doing this. Just as a reminder, so far we have the following specials. Big Bubbler, Trap Tank, Trisuka, Killer Whale 5.1, Zipcaster, the new ink strike and the vacuum cleaner. We saw an inkjet landing spot as well as missiles before in trailers but they could just be leftovers. I mean they haven't been showcased on any website or heavily featured in any trailer so far so they just might be gone and have indeed been leftovers from the Splatoon 2 builds they built upon. 
Let's focus on main weapons next. First off again, the bow. We now know that the weapon class is called Stringer and this particular one is called Tri-Stringer. We also get more insight at how it's played. And like before we see that jumping gives you a vertical shot, where all of the bullets land at the same place for concentrated high damage. Normal standing just gives you a horizontal shot, for lower but more secure damage. It also has a charge mechanic. Once fully charged, the charge is holdable like with chargers. But here's where it's getting interesting. The full charge adds an explosion to the bullets slightly after they hit the ground. So you can get in additional damage after you direct them with your bullets. In this clip we see that all of the bullets hit directly and they do around 50 to 60 damage based on the damage shown here at the border of the frame. Potentially it's the same amount of damage from the explosions. Because we see here he gets additional damage even though he moves away so he might not get hit by every explosion of each bullet. But if you combine those two, direct damage and explosions you get a one shot, pretty sure. The weapon paints decently, it does less paint while you rapid fire, but therefore you have a higher fire rate obviously, but you get more paint if you charged your shots. This is especially useful because then you can actually trap your opponents in your ink to finish them off with your explosions as shown here. The weapon in itself is very interesting because it combines a lot of stuff. It has like different shooting modes like Squeezer, but also additional charge mechanics. It's very versatile. I mean we have horizontal and vertical shots, we have the rapid fire, we can hold the charge and when we charge we additionally get like this explosive damage. For the kit the bow has toxic mist even though we don't really see it in action. But if Toxic Mist works like before, it's pretty good to trap people so that your explosions actually hit for the one shot. The special for Bow is Killer Whale, which is fine, I mean it's a ranged weapon anyway and it deals additional damage so you can kill them even more easily. Let's take a look at the 52 gun next, one of the four new returning weapons of this trailer, which we haven't seen yet confirmed for Splatoon 3. It has Splash Hole and Killer Whale, so this kit is kind of a throwback to Splatoon 1 because it had the same kit there. This is not the last time we're gonna see this, so they might do this a lot to pay homage to like old weapon kits already existing in previous games. The painting seems a little bit weaker. The fire rate might be the same, maybe a little bit higher, I couldn't tell for sure. But actually the accuracy, the RNG seems a bit better. This might be a bit questionable since the weapon 52 in Splatoon 2 at least in the current state is already in a pretty great spot, people call it broken so I don't know why they would want to buff it. Another one of the four new returning weapons in this trailer is the Octobrush. I compared everything I could find to the current Octobrush and it seems completely identical. It's still a 3 shot hit, it runs just as fast, painting's the same, the shooting speed is the same and the bullets are the same size. Hopefully they're gonna tweak something about it because the Octobrush has been underwhelming for some time now. It is such a bomb which is always good but it has Zipcaster and I got to admit it feels a bit clunky on it. I think faster killing weapons and one shot weapons will feel way better with the Zipcaster because the inkbrush just consumes so much of the special. Next up we have the Splat Roller. It's still almost the same, it keeps the kit from the last trailer, Bubbler and Curling, so that might mean that the kits we get here in the trailer will stick. But it still has both flicks, vertical and horizontal. The only difference I maybe spotted is that it has a wider paint while running around, which would be nice. And again, it has a curling bomb, which is kind of the perfect sub for the weapon. It just allows it to get around faster. Next up we have the Splat Charger. Uh, it almost seems identical, I can't see if it paints better or if it has more range. It has a Splat Bomb again, which is great for it. It's kind of a wall that you can place so people can't get through to it. And additionally it gets the vacuum cleaner. It might not be the best because you kind of want to push with your teammates and protect them with it. But if you think about it the charger can use it to protect itself if it gets pushed. Which has always been their weapon's weakness. Another thing that the uh, charger's beam is still visible. We thought earlier in other trailers that they might have removed that. Which would have been a great buff for charger. Because opponents couldn't see you aiming at them then. But yeah, they didn't get rid of it. Next we have the spatter shot. Its accuracy and range seem similar. The paint seems similar as well. It's all decent and good still. I mean, the spatter shot has always been great, so never touch a running system, I guess. It also has a well-balanced aggressive kit, so <laughs> the weapon once again gets treated with good kits. It has such a bomb, it's always good, and an Inksuka. And fun fact, it's actually the same kit that it had in Splatoon 1, but for the T-Tech. So that's another throwback. 
Um, next up we have Slusher, my beloved Slusher. Yeah, that's kind of the weapon I'm most known for since I played it in the World Cup. The weapon gets a Split Bomb and an Ink Strike, that's actually amazing. It's almost like a Split in 1, where it already had the Ink Strike, but this time except for the Burst Bombs, it has the Split Bomb. But I mean the Burst Bomb would be kind of OP on Slush, <laughs> that's a topic for another time I guess. The range seems to be about the same, the shots seem a bit thinner visually actually, but the paint is actually better. The very end, the tail, is actually bigger by a good amount, kind of like a burst bomb. Also on the walls it's huge, as you can see here. But it also paints better below you, kind of like a small circle, which is a huge buff because the weapon has always struggled a bit with painting below it. So this seems like a scary weapon and kit to look out for. Next up we have the Splitter Shot Pro, which was also never shown before. There's not much to say about it, the range, the accuracy and the paint seems to be about the same. It has the new strange Point Sensor 2.0 sub, which you're gonna get into in a minute. Kind of like in Splatoon 2, but it gets the Crab Tank as its special. That's a good addition, since it plays kind of at the same range, the Crab Tank. These are the 8 main weapons shown in the trailer, but we are not done here yet, because Nintendo has released some additional footage on the website, which actually shows two more weapons which we haven't seen gameplay from yet. The first one is the Ink Brush. We don't see much of it. It seems about to be the same speed, the same paint, but after the one post at New Year where we saw its victory animation, that's the first gameplay footage we see of it. The other one, which is a bit more interesting, is the Splatbrella, so this is also confirmed to be in the game. It seems to me that the shield is bigger. If you look at this comparison, yeah, it might be hard to tell, but I think it is. The shield still gets thrown away after you hold it for like 3 seconds, but you're a little bit faster while walking with the shield open. Once thrown away, the shield kind of travels at the same speed as before. So this has been all the weapons that we have new footage for. Just as a reminder, we also already seen the sloshing machine before, the Hydra Spitling, the 96 car, the Range Blaster, the Dynamo Roller, the Elita, the Kluga Duelies, the Clash Blaster and the Undercover Brella. So a lot of weapons have already been confirmed. Let's get to sub weapons in the trailer. They showed Splat Bombs, Suction Bombs and Curly Bombs, which still kind of work the same. They also showed Toxic Mist, but they don't really use it in the trailer, we've only seen it on the special kits of the bow. It has no visual redesign, but it still might get reworked, since they didn't show it in the trailer, and Toxic Mist was already reworked once, and it was still too weak, so they might need to tweak it again. But it also could be the case that they reverted to the old Disruptor from Splatoon 1 and just adjusted a bit, after all it looks exactly like Splatoon 1's Disruptor. The special was also in the trailer, just not used, but we can see it being part of the 52's kit. Visually it looks the same, so I doubt they reworked it, even though a lot of people wanted a rework for it. They also showed off some weird new improved point senders, but let's get to that in a second. The only sub weapon shown before, which wasn't in the trailer, was Burst Bomb, but it's still confirmed. Talking about other returning sub weapons, we still haven't seen the Auto Bomb and the Ink Mine, which have a good chance at coming back. Also, we haven't seen Sprinkler and Squid Beacon yet, which have been received as underwhelming by most of the community, so they might rework them as well or just cut them out completely. In Beacon's case, since there seems to be some kind of beacon inside the Big Bubbler, it could just have been made into a part of the special and be cut therefore. But chances are equally high that it being shown in the Big Bubbler hints at its inclusion as a sub-weapon as well. Also, there's still no sign of Torpedo Fizzy Bombs coming back though, which I would really like to have back in the game. Talking about the big elephant in the room, which I just gonna call Point Sensor 2.0 for now. I mean it kinda looks like a flashlight now, but it still kinda works like a point sensor. You shoot it at opponents in a straight line, but it needs very good accuracy, since you have to hit your opponents directly and it's very unforgiving. Once hit it marks the opponents like with the old point sensor, and it has some decent range to it. I guess close to a charger, it has a very fast airspeed, it almost feels like hit scan, but it breaks after a while, like shown here. When you hit an opponent, you can actually hear some kind of damage sound. Which would be new to Point Sensor, but you can barely make out if the opponent actually got damaged, so its damage might be pretty low. The old Point Sensor didn't have any damage, but impact knockback, for example on Baller. As usual, there appears to be some kind of indicator line, showing you where the exposed opponent is. 
But unlike the old point centers, there's also a second line or a second beam of light connecting the two players. So is there more to it? The light beam is actually visible to other players as well, which isn't the case for like the uh, indicator line. And also the inkling that used us up stands still after it hits. Even though there's no animation, so we might just not move, so I'm not quite sure. It's weird since it's the only instance in the trailer that we see it actually hit. So the connecting light beam might actually make him stationary. So far we can only theorize what's happening here. It might cause consecutive damage as long as the light beam is still connected in line of sight or something like that. But it also might steal health and give it to the thrower. The ink consumption seems to be very low, lower than the old point sensors, kind of like Burst Bomb, where you can throw more than one, namely two, like shown here. I'm not quite sure what they're doing with it, because point sensors always needed a buff, but they kind of make it harder to use, since you need a direct hit, compared to the huge area of effect that you had earlier that even could go through walls. So what is the trade-off here? Obviously you can now throw two of them, but, but I think there needs to be more, and it has to involve strange light somehow, so... So what do you guys think? Alright, obviously the trailer didn't just consist of sub, main and special weapons, but there's also a lot of additional stuff that I want to point out here. First up, the squid roll, one of the two new main movement options we have in the game. I mean, we've seen it before, it's just a quick roll in the opposite direction that you can perform. But here it seems to confirm that it actually indeed has a few invincibility frames. You can clearly hear that from the armor sound that quickly plays in this clip when the opposing splatter shot is actually hitting the inkling. And it actually has been confirmed by the official Japanese website that there's some kind of invincibility for a few frames. Might just be a damage reduction, but might be a full invincibility, we're not quite sure yet, but this casing confirms with the glow that you see that we actually have some invincibility on the squid roll. So can we actually block like one-shot weapons like blasters, dynamos or even chargers with like a well-tiled squid roll? That would be crazy and I don't know how to feel about it yet, but it's pretty safe to assume that we have some invincibility frame on the move. The squid roll will definitely be great at dodging stuff like the killer wheel. Also, there's a significant lack of squid searches in the trailer, but I'm sure they're gonna get the spotlight another time. We also got more footage of the new spawning mechanic. The area to jump to from the spawn is actually wider than we saw previously. You can for example jump onto the high ground on the left side here. But most importantly, we see that you actually get like 3 seconds of invincibility after you spawned. Which obviously is there to prevent spawn camping, which in my mind is a great addition because there's just no safe spawn anymore to stand in. This whole new spawning mechanic makes spawning way more dynamic and actually addresses one of the biggest complaints of the general Splatoon player base which was spawn camping in the first two games. Next up abilities. In one short moment we can actually see the abilities of one of the opponents that splatted the player in the trailer. And you can see that we have main and sub abilities back. And it's still the same amount. 3 main slots and 3x3 three three sub slots. There are no new abilities shown as well, it's just some special power up, some special saver and some ink recovery. But hey, at least those return. It kind of deconfirms that we get like a completely new category like classes or pants to have even more room for abilities, but I mean at least they look shiny this time around, don't they? Talking about gear, I mean, despite looking sick, there's not much to say about it. I mean at least it's confirmed now that we have customizable eyebrows as you can see by the different kinds of eyebrows right here. And we get more sick looking pants. And it seems like you can even wear them regardless of gender. Now to something very interesting at the start of the trailer. There appears to be name cards all around now. At the start of the match, while you get spattered by someone and at the end of the match and they're completely customizable with your own name. Your own title, like Inkless Office Drone here for example, completely unique background and a completely unique number attached to your card. This is especially exciting because you can probably not have the same name and the same number twice, so the cards are completely unique. This is especially great for people who have imposters of them running around with the same name. So in the future you can really tell if someone is really who you think it is by looking at the right number. But that leaves the question for another topic. Those specific numbers, they kind of look like specific Discord tags or other friend code systems used in other games or software. Will we actually get a new friend code system? 
I mean, if all we need is a name and a number, it's way easier to add people, way easier to invite people to lobbies. And since Nintendo was actually in the process of redoing their whole online structure anyway, it might be tied to that. And this is actually pretty exciting, because the old adding system is pretty outdated, and that would be a welcoming addition. Another interesting addition are these kinds of awards and medals added to the results screen. Something like number one overall splatter, popular target, enemy splatter, so probably most kills, most kills on your team, and maybe most deaths. This is huge, because before we only had like kills and deaths, but this time this is way more nuanced. I mean, we can potentially get medals for like using a more special, turfing the most, the most kills are special, maybe even the most objective points in modes like Rainmaker or Tower, when you stayed on the tower the most. It's pretty cool to see because there's just so much more to a match than just getting kills or using a special. But talking about that, I still hope that we see the amount of kills, the amount of assists, deaths and the specials at the end of each match. But maybe this medal system can be even integrated into the ranked system. Maybe if you get a lot of medals, you get less minus points or even more plus points because your overall performance is better. That might be a nice addition. Shortly talking about the new UI. It looks completely new. I mean, it comes down to your taste. If you like the old one or the new one better. But at least the special points and the special meter are better visible. But something that's pretty disappointing is that they are still just Booyah and this way attached to the D-pad. Please, can we just get a proper ping system on the D-pad or at least two more commands for the missing D-pad buttons? We can also see on the top left corner that we're currently in spectator mode. They also added a cross symbol, which is a nice new detail that gives you a better overview at how many players in your teams are actually alive. There also appears a more visible animation on top of the screen that resembles a cross as well when someone dies. Let's talk about servers. In one moment of the trailer you can slightly see someone falling off the edge and teleporting up again. Fake falling has always been a thing in Splatoon because of the peer-to-peer -peer system and a lot of people believe this confirms the game to be peer-to-peer -peer again. Nintendo recently redid their online infrastructure and they have just been running a test online round with the game Switch Sports last month. So it's still a thing that is happening. To be honest, I don't think they would use the new servers for internal testing and also not for recording some not finalized gameplay for trailers, so there's hope. Also, you got to remember that we are in spectator mode and it has always been laggier than the usual game. And compared to the insane fake falls in Splatoon's 2 spec mode, this right here is nothing. Shortly talking about modes as well, I mean only Turfer was shown, it functions exactly the same, 3 minutes, so maybe we're gonna see new modes next in the next trailer? Mm, lastly I wanna talk about maps. There was only one shown, but it changed a lot actually. Especially around the spawn, where they removed the whole house and actually moved around some of the parts. The bridge in mid is mostly the same, structure wise, but there's a lot of different obstacles moved around and they actually made the mid a lot thinner. So there are less options now to move around below. So you're kind of trapped below the bridge, which makes bridge even more important. I mean, this might still change to release because they always love to just move around objects on maps. They did that in Splatoon 2 all the time, in all the trailers that they showed. So it's not worth it to look at every rock that they moved. But I mean, for those who haven't seen it yet, there are sponges on the map. So yeah, sponges are back, but I think we saw that in earlier trailers already. The map looks pretty static. There's like no gimmicks or movable areas. So I hope this is like one of the introduction maps and they're gonna go more out with more gimmicks for the next maps that they're gonna show. Because after all, we've only seen two new maps so far. The very first one, which is kind of the introduction map, and this one. So we still have time for crazy maps. And that's everything I could find. I really tried to give the best overview possible for all the info we have so far. If I missed something, let me know in the comments. If you're as hyped as me for the game and can't wait for more info, I suggest you checking out some of the insane montages I did recently, like this one which consists of Prella shield kills only, or check out my other guide from the first trailer. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe as well. With that being said, have a good one, see you around guys, Watson out.